Hello and welcome back again to Creepy Cutie Crafty. Welcome back again to yet another crafting video with me, Heather. And this week uh, on my Friday Fabric Fumble, I'm going to continue a little bit more of my Omori piece for Squinks. Again, I'm filming this on my knee, so it's nice and comfortable. Um, and I'm going to start doing the colour in the hair and on the body here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do about it. I've said that I was going to try and do some um, black work patterns um, for the outside edge, but I think I might do this in, with a mix of um, seed stitches and straight stitches, so counter stitches. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that though. I'm going to make it easy for myself and I'm going to start with the yellow shirt here. And then I'm probably going to start doing the other parts out afterwards. And there's going to be more sort of decorative skid stitches and counter stitches on the outside edge. If that makes sense. I'm sure it does. I don't know. Before I start that though, I'm just going to show you a quick something that I picked up this morning. I went into a charity shop near me and I found some lovely packs of buttons. This is my little board. 20p for a See, look, 20p for a buttons, and I'm looking forward to using with the little metal coated buttons there, um, to using these in um, some of my other projects. So that'll be fun. It's a nice big sort of silver button there. I think it looks really nice. And some green ones, and as we know, green is my favourite colour, so I'm going sure to get some of the most green ones there as well. So that is a lovely buttons for me to play with and so that all the cool this. Oops, I'll do another, um, just a show of those when I actually use them sometime in the next few weeks. Anyway, so I'm going to sort of start on this one down here. I've got some yellow number, oops, number eight parallel thread, pearl parallel. I don't know. I still, I really should look that up, shouldn't I? I still don't know though. So I'm just going to sort of start doing some shading, sort of some colouring in here, and then I'm going to add some shade with the black later, I think. It's not going to be super detail, detailed, detailed, or detailed as it is actually pronounced, because that's how English works, but uh, it's going to be fun. So, one of the things I was going to think about doing was um, going to the Festival of Quilts that's happening near here, but... um. Unfortunately, I just didn't have the time this year. Uh, next year, almost definitely, I'm intending to go to the Creative Craft Show again. That'll be fun to go to and have a look at what other um, stitchery type stuff they've got going on. Um, and other crafts as well. But I think I'm going to be doing that. I think it's coming in October. So I'll talk to more about that when I'm close to the time. We've also got Comic Con coming up, which is um, going to be fun, but that's in um, the end of November as well, so that'll be about the same time. Um, so I'm going to sort of start by doing straight stitches, um, and we'll see how we go. What I'll do, I'll start from up here, I think. So again, I'm trying to do. Um, stitches that will uh, tie themselves down. I should have drawn a grid on this one, but I, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be too hard and fast, but that's just how it goes, isn't it? It's me being as organised as ever. Um, also, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but uh, I finished the mystery stitchery that I was doing last week. I'll put a picture up on the screen somewhere here. And somebody quite rightly guessed that it was based on Inside Out 2. So yay! Well done to them. I'll put their name on the screen as well. I should have made a note of that that I'm very sorry. But I'll put the name on the screen here so you can see who they are. But I mean that was quite fun. I think I'm going to enjoy doing that sort of thing again in the future. You'll have to let me know if you like that sort of thing. I have got another one I'm starting today, so that'll be fun to show you. Apparently everything's going to be fun today. My, my 
my words are just fun 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 not very helpful <laughs> anyway so yeah as you can see i'm just doing a a row of two sort of dashes one before the other oops trying to keep them nice and even that was a little bit short so i'm just going to go back on myself there And there are some areas on the uh, original picture which are shaded, so I'm going to try and do that using the black thread later. I might do that off screen though, because that's going to be a bit more of a, a brain tingle, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's going to sit me scratching my head. So yeah, what have you guys been up to this week? I have been at work. I've been at work for the last two days. It's very, very busy in the museum um, this week because it's the summer holidays. Not hugely busy. Um, we were expecting more people, but it's a lot of people coming in. Um, and just having a fun day out, I guess. Um, but because it's such a nice sunny weather here at the moment, um, we've um, got the thing that people like to stay indoors, they don't want to go out somewhere, they want to, um, you know, go out and enjoy the sun whilst it's there. And it's so rare for us to have proper summers like this, um, that uh, we like to make the most of it. Unfortunately, that does also mean that lots of people wind up getting sunburned. Which is not ideal, but uh, that's how it is, I'm afraid. Um, yes. I'm not much of a sun worshipper myself. I, I don't like going out when it's very hot. I, I burn very easily and I get dehydrated very easily as well so it's not ideal for me to go out for any length of time. But it is nice to enjoy it sometimes. Um, me and Squinks this morning actually both went and got our hairs cut because my hair was very long. Um, I don't go to the hairdresser very often, I'm not that kind of person. Um, it's just not something that I'm in the habit of doing. So it winds up that I spend, you know, two years or three years between haircuts. Uh, I think this time it was 2024 now, and the last one I had was, yeah, about, about two and a half, three years ago. Because um, I remember it was uh, uh, during one of the lockdowns that we had. And I basically just cut it all off and decided to leave it to to grow for itself. Um, so me and Squinks decided to go and get our hair, hair cut, hairs cut this morning. Uh, they've got a nice short, so me and Squinks, uh, so they've got a nice short uh, sort of um, bob now and um, mine is just below my shoulders, so I've still got quite a bit of length there. Um, but you can tell how long my hair was, because below my shoulders is still quite long, and a lot of my hair came off. So, yeah, um, I really should cut my hair more quickly than I do. So, yeah. But, uh, it was nice to go out and have a morning wandering around with them. I'm getting, getting shorn. Uh, it's just nice to, to feel fresh, doesn't it? Um, what else is there going on this week? Um, well, next week... Me, well, tomorrow, me and Squinks are going to be having a go at a drawing challenge. We haven't done that in a long time, so that should be fun. Um, and then next week, we're going to have a go at uh, embroidering a bag each. Well, Squinks is going to be embroidering the bag. I'm going to be making a pincushion. 
because I need a pincushion because I've got lots and lots of things that I'm making at the moment and I keep losing bits and pieces particularly pins and needles which is not ideal because you don't want to find a needle with your foot do you? No, you certainly do not Heather anyway and we went out this morning as I say uh, and we went past the uh, the baker in town and bought some very lovely freshly made um, cobs sort of crusty bread rolls that we have here um, and just eating those without anything on and it's still absolutely lovely um, and what else are we going to be doing so we're planning on going to uh, a, a little arcade near us it's attached to a um, um, a bowling alley, a bowling you know, place and uh, we like to go in there and play some games and have a bit of fun but don't spend too much money obviously because it is money that's being thrown into machines that aren't going to give you very much back but it's fun for half an hour isn't it do you guys like arcades let me know in the comments down below and have you ever won anything in an arcade that's the other question I have I've only ever won one thing from you know the, 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 the claw machine and that is a, a, a squink, a squink, a stitch toy, so Lilo and Stitch. So I've won a, um, a, a stitch cuddly toy, that was nice. Um, and I've never won anything before that, and I've never won anything since. Not from the claw games, anyway. I have seen people go in there, they get lots and lots and lots of um, toys and things from these claw games. And all. Not jealous of them, but you know, I wish I had that skill. But it's it's fun nevertheless. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's how it is at the moment. I am also looking at other crafts to try in the autumn. So after Squints goes back to school, um, I don't yet know what it is that I want to do. Um, I'm considering whether or not to do. Um, some weaving. Um, I definitely have several more embroidery and fabric construction tasks ahead of me and I'm also looking at doing maybe a book nook, you know, a, a shelf nook. Those things that, you know, people make that slip into the, your bookshelf between the, between the books and uh, that's often quite, you know, quite gently themed, let's put it that way, yeah, themed around like um, uh, libraries or um, castles or those sort of aesthetics, and I'm thinking of having a go with those, but I'm thinking of doing one in maybe more of a creepy style, I don't know yet. Talking of creepy, did you watch my recent video with Squinks, oops, punking the camera? Um, on um, decor, uh, decadent type things. Uh, so it's basically you get this sort of clay glue stuff. It's called cream, deco cream. Um, and you put it onto your uh, phone case or you put it onto uh, like a mirror surround or whatever and you add little charms or buttons or beads or whatever. And I and we had a go at that. Um, some of them were quite cute, and some of them were very, very creepy. So I don't quite know how you guys are going to react to that because they are a bit, bit weird for something of that nature. But it was very fun to do, and I know that Squinks would definitely like to do it again. And I think I would too. Um, let me know below. Would you like me to to revisit that? And what kind of style do you think I should try and do? Do you think I should do something like very sort of cutesy um themed maybe on Bridgerton or something like that <laughs> I don't know uh, it could be something it could be fun to do that what do you think let me know in the comments below and of course whilst you're there remember to like and subscribe and do all those lovely things that help the channel like mine to grow because you know it's nice to nice to be part of the community isn't it and there's a very good community very big community that I'm only just learning about here on um, YouTube 
but also I'm going to be starting on TikTok. I've never done TikTok. I've never quite got my head around it. But then again, I said that about Instagram um, last year, and I seem to have suddenly become not addicted to it, but I'm now a regular user. It is very handy for sharing ideas and for sharing sort of mini tutorials on how to do things. And um, I've been enjoying finding out a lot more about other crafts from Instagram and seeing other people's very inspirational designs and ideas and things. And I definitely do need to uh, learn more about what I'm doing. Which is part of the course really, isn't it? I just like to learn things and I like to do things. That was a very weird sentence, I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, some of these stitches are getting a bit sort of seed stitchy, which is not quite what I intended, but I'm going to lengthen some if I can. What else have we got going on next week? Next week, me and Squinks are probably going to go and visit Birmingham. One of their favourite sort of comic, anime, cartoony, cutesy shops is there. I think we're definitely going to try and visit that next week. Um, and also uh, going to have a look in the bookshops and things. I'm afraid I'm a bit of a bookholic. I do like to buy many, many, many books. And whenever I pick up a new craft, which is quite often, as you know, um, I also quite often like to go and get myself some books on how to do it or some ideas on how to do it. I've not quite got everything that I want, but one of these days I will do. My to read pile is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. It's getting huger and huger as the day goes by. And uh, there are definitely many, many more books I would like to buy on many, many more subjects. But uh, there we go. One day. One day I'll have a house that's big enough for an entire library. And then I can fill it with book nooks as well and things like that. Yeah, so, what crafting have you guys been up to over this summer? Have you had anything new? Are you going to be trying new styles, new methods, new anything? I'd love to know. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'm also getting to know some more um, YouTubers. Um, some of them are... So, yeah, some very sort of friendly, very helpful people out there who love to discuss their work and how they're progressing with their ideas. And I do like to see how people come up with their ideas and how they create their designs and things. It's always fascinating to watch. Um, I'm also uh, thinking of taking uh, Squinks to the Black Country Living Museum, which is a museum, sort of one of those costumed museums near us where people dress in uh, costumes that are more appropriate to the time, the era in which they lived, uh, the, well, the, the characters lived, and they sort of, you know, act out as though they, they, they are in that time. But I find it quite interesting because the uh, Living Museum has so many different eras that it's representing. How do the characters, how do the actors and the uh, people who work there remember which era to pretend to be? That's what I don't know. <laughs> we shall find out when we go there next week. What else have we got going on? Not much, to be honest with you. It's all about making... Uh, um, content for you guys at the moment, which is fun to do, but also means that I do run out of things to say, sadly. I'm going to be visiting my parents in a couple of weeks, but that'll be me taking Squinks down so we can have a bit of a, a run around there, and then maybe I can take some photographs of the city, well, the town that I'm going to be in. Um, Squinks is currently learning guitar, so we're going to try and get them a few bits and pieces for their guitar like a, a new strap and some other bits and pieces as well 
maybe a guitar case and some music books. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, it's in a part of the country that's not particularly bougie, but it's fun to visit. There, well, I mean, there is, <laughs> there are bougie parts of the country. So when I say bougie, I mean kind of very expensive, very posh parts of the country. Um, and one of those places is Marlborough, which is very near to where my parents live. They live just outside it, so, you know, house prizes are very expensive. Um, but, um, just along the road from there is Swindon, which is not seen as, you know, quite as, as fancy and posh but it is still a lovely place to visit and got so many interesting things there they've got the museum of called steam which is um basically celebrating the area where a lot of the steam trains and things in england were constructed so they were built there on site and they've got some of the old machines there which are fascinating again to watch because you can see how various parts of the uh, trains were all made and in one part of the museum you can actually go underneath one of the locomotives that they've constructed there and see how it how it looks underneath which i don't think you can really do anywhere else in the country we've got a um uh, a locomotive in um the museum that i work in you can't really see underneath it, not unless you get on your hands and knees, which is not really ideal. <laughs> but uh, it's still a very nice, to, nice place to visit. And in that part of the country, there's also all sorts of very, um, well, prehistoric, they call them prehistoric monuments that exist there. So we've got things like... Uh, well, Stonehenge is very close by. Um, you've got the biggest stone circle in the world, which is Avebury, um, which is a really lovely place to visit. And there are um, uh, smaller things there to look at, like uh, the West Kennet Long Barrow and the East Kennet Long Barrow. So these are ancient um I think they call it paleolithic uh, burial grounds um one of which is open which is west Kennet long barrow one of which is has been left closed so you can go in there and you can see the construction of the uh, the barrow inside and how they were built how they were made and you know how the grave goods were, were displayed and things. But they haven't left any of the grave goods because this is an unmanned um, site. So you have to kind of just read the signs and hope that the uh, the, the um, graffiti artists have to face too much of it. I'm really liking this square pattern, I think. What do you think, guys? It's a little square pattern like that. I think that looks really nice. I think I'll try and continue that along the whole of this um, this top here. And again, I am doing it freehand, so it's not going to be perfect, but I think I think it works really well. I like that kind of handmade feel to it. Um, see you here. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about. I haven't made a list again. I should make that list, shouldn't I? I keep saying I'm going to make a list of things to talk about, and then I always forget until just before I start filming, and then I go, oh no, I'm going to run out of things to say. <laughs> Such is life. Anyway, um, my things are still in the exhibition in London, in Wine Croydon. Um, it's going to be fun to see if other people spot my work there. 
I haven't really heard from any of my friends who might be going to it yet, but I'm hoping they get to go because it's nice to, to, you know, see each other's work in, on, on the walls, as it were. Um, excuse my husband in the background, he's having a very loud business meeting with his colleagues at work. And what else is there to talk about? I'm going to try and get this little bit finished and then I'm going to go on to the other project that I've got going on. I'm not going to do a huge amount on that one but we'll see how we go. I've got quite a few projects lined up for the next month or so so that'll be fun to do. That's the sound of silence for me for a few minutes as my brain tries to tick over and work out what to say next. I hope I'm not boring you guys. It's hot, my brain tends to shut down quite heavily, unfortunately, so I need to keep myself hydrated and things. Unfortunately, um, I've had to close the window, so I've not got much air blowing through, and that is because my neighbours have decided very kindly to share their musical taste with me again. Um, it's an awful lot of uh, what I call duff duff music, which is just heavy beats and no melody. Which is great if you're out dancing and raving, but not great if you're at home doing some stitchery in the quiet. <laughs> Such is life, I guess. Everyone's got their own taste, but that's not my taste, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, I know people used to complain about my, my musical taste when I was younger. They probably still complain about it now, but it's personal taste and all that. And I don't think it should be, don't really want it to be, uh, what's the word, uh, inflicted on people who aren't enjoying it, or who didn't choose to, to play it. <laughs> Is that too much? Is that too cruel? I don't know. Um, and I'll be watching some of the Olympics as well, of course. Can't really go on a commentary without mentioning the fact that the Olympics are, is happening at the moment in Paris. I haven't really watched much of it, but I have enjoyed some of the things that I've seen. I've seen some of the things about the um, the uh, handgun um, final and the fact that there's this fellow from Turkey who got silver, whereas all of his um, rivals came with all these you know, headgear and things, all these cyber things. and. Only one of them was better than him. So all these are uh, high fluting, high fan dangling uh, pieces of kit and nothing quite beats the human ingenuity, does it? What do you think? <laughs> I think the problem is is that if you have machines telling you the best way to aim and things, you sort of get used to them telling you rather than Working it out for yourself, maybe. I don't know. I don't play these things. And then again. I mean, it's quite funny because we had, a few years ago, a, um, a shooter in this country who was representing us in the Olympics. It was a long time ago now. Um, and they were complaining that... Um, Unfortunately, because handguns are banned in this country, well, unfortunately, because handguns are banned in this country, they couldn't practice within our shores, so they had to go out of the country to practice, which is great. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a loss, but it's not that much of a loss, I don't think. Right, I'll finish with that bit. I do like the way those squares are turning out. 
I'm looking forward to doing some more of those over here. So I'll try and get that finished for next week. Anyway, I'm going to leave this on here. Hold on, I just tie it off. So yes, I'm going to leave this up like this. Mostly because, as it's summer, I'm not going to be wearing a blanket. And I've not got trousers on, I've got shorts on. So you'd have half an hour of looking at my knees. And nobody needs to see that. Hey! Anyway, so I'm going to share this with you. What do you think of that thing, guys? This is just the start of something. This is another mystery design. Don't guess yet. I'll put a short up of it when it's done. And you can have, tell me what you think it might be once it's finished. So we've got some black um, French knots. We've got some sort of gold to reddish uh, French knots. And we've got some pale blue again this has a theme i'm not going to tell you what the theme is it is based on uh, well it's based on a film and a book series but don't guess yet because it could be in all sorts of things i mean even even if you watch like deadpool and things that's basically from a book isn't it well, comic books are books i don't care what you say some absolutely genius books out, uh, comic books out there. Um, I'm a bit of a comic book nerd, and I have copies of several um, book series is, 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 that are just amazing. Um, some of them are quite horrible, but also just utterly brilliant. And they're very creative in their stories. So yeah, highly recommend. Check me out. Comics as books, as well as just books. I'm not a purist in that, in that sense. Um, I mean, have you ever read? Ooh, what should I say? The Watchmen was um, is a movie, and it was a book. Um, I think I preferred the book to the movie. The um, there were some issues with the way that the book, the comic book, ended, but I think I prefer. The comic to the movie because apart from anything else in the comic there are some uh, parallel themes to the story of the, the heroes at the center which weren't shared in the in the movie well is it also a tv show isn't it i haven't actually seen the tv show i need to see that um I mean, there are lots of things that you can do with comics that you can't do in movies and don't always land as well in movie lore as well as they do in, in the books. So, for example, in a comic, in the comics, there is a character called Rorschach and he's quite a violent character. Um... And in one of his um, stories, he has all sorts of things, all sorts of themes going on. So he's based on, the, you know, the Rorschach um, ink blot pictures that you know psychologists use because he's got a mask that changes its shape like a Rorschach picture, um, and. In one of his stories, um, there's kind of a, um, a uh, what's the word? Not parallel. Um, it mirrors things. There's another word for it. I can't remember what it is. I'll think, think of it in a minute. But basically, the whole of the, the, the um, story, just about him, has a, is a mirror. Um, and then you get to the centre of that um, story and the design of the page is an X. Um, so it kind of, it starts with something happening and then right at the very end of it on the same page, that same thing happens again, but in reverse. So it's kind of mirroring how things progress in that story. It's very interesting. Um, 
and uh, it's definitely worth a revisit. It's one of my favourite novels, and that you know I think it won um, some very very significant prizes for the, the actual storytelling, the writing in that in that story. Um, and it's it's quite fun to actually have a look at some of the, the uh, comics and look at the art in them. You get some art which is very idiosyncratic. It's very reflective of the person who's drawing or writing. Um, uh, so you know, you've got things like uh, Jamie Hewlett's um, Tank Girl um, series, which comes up again in style in his uh, work doing the Gorillas, you know, the, uh, the music band, um, which I always found quite fascinating because his work is very uh, visceral in some ways. It's very sort of murky um, when it comes down to it. And you can always tell Jamie Hewlett's work from most other people. I mean, you do did then off, afterwards get people copying his style for music videos, for comic books, for other stuff. Um, but there's one style that's his, and you can you can read it very much in in what he, he creates. But then um, you've also got some books which can be incredibly dark in theme but very beautiful in their presentation um, I mean Amori here is one example of that again it's based on the computer game Amori again this is not a recommendation it is quite a dark um, story um, but the artwork is, is fabulous so you can't really uh, fought it for that. Um, and some of the comic books that I've admired for their artwork is things like the, the Sandman series, which you know is written by Neil Gaiman, um, and that was turned into a TV series a few years ago, which is again something that I recommend you look up because it is absolutely fabulous. And I've just broken my needle threader. Such is life, so there we go. Squinks is coming down the stairs. I did a little something. Well done. Now I can put these on it. Okay. Um, I'll come and check your work in a bit. Okay. Love you. Love you too. They're very excited. They've got a new um, um, bookshelf in their room that they've built themselves. So I'm going to go up and check their work in a bit, make sure it isn't going to fall, fall apart tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, the Sandman series, um, especially the opening pages because it's very sort of collage-y, um, but yeah, some parts of the Sandman series are incredibly dark, but very much worth, very much worth um, looking up and having a read of. There are, again, parts of it in the book that were unfilmable for the TV series, but that's that's understandable. That's why it's taken, what, 25 years for it to go from a book to the to the screen? And of course, Gaiman doesn't do the art, but he's the writer of those stories. So of course, it comes to re reflect what he's wanting to say through his work, which I think is, you know, Again, fascinating. I think that one was too soon. I'll move that one to there, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, there's also, uh, there's some, like I say, some extremely good artwork, if you can find it, um, in various uh, comics written by all kinds of uh, writers. And you've got things like one of the ones that I found really breathtaking in terms of its artwork 
is Thanos Rising. Um, now you probably recognise the name Thanos from the Avengers series of movies. Thanos Rising is about where he comes from and what he was doing and how he became who he was and things like that. Um, very dark and it's about how he basically fell in love with the embodiment of, of death as, as a female character and how it essentially drives him mad. But the artwork is just beautiful and uh, worth looking up but again remember that the storyline itself is very very dark. Um, is it easy? That's a tangle which I don't want to have in there. There we go. And yep. So yeah, tell me, if, are you comic book readers out there? Do you like uh, reading comics and what books and things you like to read? Um, things have definitely very much moved on from the era when it was like um, tracing the outlines and colouring the pictures is now absolutely beautiful artwork and I'm going to try and see if I can get the centre of this now um, so let's see so it's about there I'm not going to be precise with this one because I don't want to be it's just a design I'll be more precise with the next layer I think I've not got a huge amount of time left to film to be honest with you I was expecting to get a bit more done, but isn't that always the way? Um, so yeah, do you read comics? Let me know down in the comments below what kind of comics do you like to read? What kind of books do you like to read? What kind of stories are your thing? I remember where the camera is, haven't I? go for a smaller one this time to try and fill it out a bit more quickly than the last one I did. That one took me a lot longer than I wanted it to, so it took a long time for it to wind up in a short and a very good guess. But yeah, it was fun. filling up their time with shopping and talking to their friends and all sorts of stuff like that and I'm just crafting and preparing for work and things it's uh, just how it is at the moment I guess trying to wrap my brains. Hmm, what else have we got going on? I think we're going to try and get some work done in the garden over the next few days. As I say, I'm not sure if it's something I but if I get very hot, so I have to be very careful about dehydrating and things, but if I can, I do like to go out and get the garden tidy. We used to have it 
lovely. We used to have um, like vegetables and things growing in the back, but every time recently when we've gone to try and do that, something has happened. So for a long while I couldn't get the time to go out there because I was in all sort of complications after having them. Um, with squeaks rather, um, there were com complications after having squeaks, so I had to rest up after doing that, and then I was looking after them and trying to work at the same time, and then I um, had um on covid and also i was studying so it's just kind of one of those things that's been put on the back burner but it really does need to have a lot of stuff done to it to get it into a, a nice condition again i think um and i'm gonna try and get out there with the fan if we have some duller days some more cloudy days for sure Time as ever doth run away from me. You find you that guys that time is running out for you, or not running out, running away from you. Whenever you try to get stuff done, it just doesn't want to to get done. <laughs> Such is life. Anyway, um so yeah. Got another few weeks of having squeaks at home. Um We've got a couple of, well, we've got several videos lined up. We're going to have another go at doing tie-dyeing. Last time we did it, it was okay, but I think we wanted the colours to be a bit brighter, so I've looked up a few tie-dyeing experts online and got their opinions, and I think we're going to be having another go at it in the next few weeks or so. And as I say, they're going to have a go at some embroidery, and we're going to do some doll remake type things. And oh, what else? I can't think. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done a um. A, uh, a drawing challenge but it's going to be fun to have a go at that um, I know Squinks enjoys doing the drawing challenges but uh, I've also got some drawing and artwork that I've got to get done as well because I need to send it to someone and yeah all the exciting things happening who knows maybe next week I'll win the lottery and suddenly I'll be able to do all the things I want to do I never thought I had the time for before. <laughs> anyway, I've nearly come to the end of this one. Um, noise upstairs is squinks tidying their room which means probably almost exactly the opposite of what tidying means to anybody else <laughs> but there we go okay so i think i'm going to do a little bit more of this off screen um and someone started to mow their lawn outside i think i'm going to take that as my cue to put this down and go and do something else instead. Okay, so let me know what you think of that so far and let me know what you think of the Amori piece. I do like the way these squares look down here. I'm going to do a bit more down there as well as well as the rest of the shirt and we shall see how it goes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been a bit pared down. Um, if you want to see how either of these turn out, make sure that you do the usual thing of, oops, liking and subscribing and tapping that little notification bell to make sure that you don't lose me on the internet and you get notified of all the new and exciting things i'm doing other than that i hope you have a good week
Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.